I just want to get into it by thanking you, bro, for coming out here. You feel what I'm saying? I've been trying to get him on the podcast really since I started. <laughs> but you feel yeah. what I'm saying? He'd be busy with training, so it's kind of hard to put our schedules together sometimes to really catch up. But uh, just quickly introduce yourself to them. Tell them a little bit about yourself, what you do. You feel what I'm saying? And we'll get started. Uh, you know, my name is Jalen. You know, uh, everybody call me JJ if you know me. Uh, I mean, really just a man of all trades. For real, I do a lot. Um, I got a, we got a contracting business called Southern Contracting Group. Um, me and my two brothers, you know, just trying to build that off the ground. And then really my training business, you know, UFO, underdogs fighting odds. I mean, we got a full team. Um, yeah, I, I help out when I can. You know, yeah, you know, know you know, yeah, 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 for help, sure. You know, we had, he was our first year coaching AAU this year, you know, it was. It that was, was fun, bro. You no, know, it was fun. It was the best time I had to where I really just enjoyed myself for real, you know, yeah. just um, coaching a group of girls that really just cared about the game. And um, I think that's, that's why we do this. You know, me, you, yeah. um, Zay, Keys, Dre, uh, Rico. And we've been there. <laughs> we've been there before. Yeah. So. As far as, because obviously I we almost been knowing each other our whole life. Um, so did back when we was coming up, did you ever see yourself becoming a trainer or a coach or? Uh, so for me, I mean, I always, if you knew me or you, know, you asked me the question, I'd always tell you like, I just wanted to use college as a tool uh, to help pay for it. Right. Um, but I always knew I wanted to coach. Um, or do something with basketball and give back in some way. Right. Um, I felt like if I would have had somebody telling me the things I ran into later in life as far as basketball or just <laughs> prepared myself at an early age, yeah. you know, I feel like I was a kid. You knew me, bro. I yeah. wasn't someone that, you know, I was cool. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't outside or nothing. Well, you didn't know the things that you know now. Absolutely. So, you know, for then. me, I just felt like if I would have had somebody like poured into me, yeah, uh, that would have been huge. Uh, so I just, I want to get that feeling back. Right. Know? Me that's too, bro. Thing. And that's, that was, and that was one of the reasons why I really started to come out more was because like when I actually was going out there, I felt like I was back in that time a little bit again. Yeah. It was like, bro, I remember, my parents coming to the AAU tournaments, you know what I'm saying, wishing wishing for the best, even if we didn't win, which we didn't lose too many games. So as far as the whole AAU thing, like what made you choose to, um, you know, coach the girls? Uh, and if so, like what – I mean, by you doing that, what did you learn the most? Like what did you take away from this previous season? Um, I mean, the honest truth uh, as far as coaching the girls um... – which I have a relationship with all the girls I feel like now to where we all grew a bond. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a select few that have been with me since day one from me training them in Minville. Yeah. Um and uh you know, I just got a great relationship with them girls. You know who they are, you know. And understand how much they care about the game. So I felt like if I could give a month and a half, two months of my time, yeah, uh, you know, that could pay off in a big way. Um, Facts. they don't it can. Get, you know, like in McMinnville, man, it's just like I said, all the you time. You grew up out there. Yeah, so. grew up out there. You know, that's where I'm from. Uh, so, you know, one thing about, you know, McMinnville, bro, it's just, in my opinion, it's not a lot of ambition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because so there's, like, there's not much to look out to. Like, absolutely. you got Nashville to where you might be in the big city and you like, oh, we got this. We got Innsworth over. But it's still hard to do it when you don't really have the opportunities or you don't have. You know what I'm saying? Just the facilities. You might not have the gym close to you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's super important that you've kind of reached uh, reached out to a lot of these people and told them, you know what I'm saying, come out here. We're going to get right. Because I've been to some of the training sessions. And yeah. a lot of them, I mean, even the college guys, they be out there dying. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. yesterday yeah. you had people, yeah. you had them look like they ain't worked out all season. But, right. you, but you work them out every day. So that's like super yeah. good. And as far as you coming up with a team, like, what was your vision when you first started going? Like, when you first started UFO, what was your original vision? And is that vision still the same now? Um, so as far as UFO, um, I had already been training for, um, uh, let's see, about a year in. Yeah. I feel like um, I was just starting off. And uh, my cousin, Kelsey, um, she actually already had a brand called UFO, mm -hmm. which is Underdogs Fight Nights. Right. Um, 
I want to say it was under a rap label. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure. But um, she just called me one day and uh, just um, you know, just was brainstorming and basically had this idea of like. You know, underdogs fighting ours, that's fit what you're trying right. to do. Right. It is. And, um, yeah, facts. When we came together on that, it just made sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of where I got the, 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 as far as the name, that's where the brand came from. Mm-hmm. So um, when we joined together, and, you know, that's when we kind of just made it to where we at now and just kept building along the way and just. So, from there. so how was the, how was the build up to it? So when you finally was like, all right, I'm going to do it. How was it the first couple of weeks? So, I mean, obviously, I know you you know a lot of people, mm-hmm. but still getting people to buy in to, to to spend time with you teaching them. So, what was that process like? Um, you feel what I'm saying? Think, I've always been curious to that. I think um, it came with having a plan. Yeah. And understanding, okay, you know, if you want to train, you got to have a gym. Yeah. So, the process of going through that, and that's how I started coaching in Smyrna. And, uh, you know, the guys that you seen, you seen one of them yesterday, you know, it was Zay. Yeah. Um, and then um, Savon, you mm-hmm. know, that was there yesterday. Um, it was the two guys that I first started out with and really just um, worked them out and, you Word know, stay mouth. consistent. Yeah. You know, I, I really feel like that's the main thing. Like, I started with them, but I just stayed consistent. Had so many up and downs with mm-hmm. this man um, from – making so many sacrifices, I could just name them off of. I mean, I went the longest without not making a dime. So it's yeah. just like. I mean, you as, sacrifice a lot of your time yeah, now. So I mean, even, <laughs> even, yeah, absolutely. But even just you being in the gym yesterday, you can see, like, how I am to it. It's like the money really don't mean anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. I tell kids, parents, if you hear me talk, like, I'd rather one person be in here than 10 and y'all don't care. Y'all just in here to be in here. Yeah, because now you wasting your time and ain't nobody getting absolutely. better, which what? is the ultimate goal. Absolutely. You nah. know, so it's like um, we hold everybody accountable. Yeah. You know, we – I love this, man. You know what I'm saying? So um, just – I really just stay consistent with it. And uh, it's even now, still – going through things. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Right. You know, um, I just know I got to stay consistent. Yeah. And if I do that and keep the right people around me, then I'm going to get to where I'm trying to be at. We're going to get to where we're trying to be at. Right. You know, it ain't just about me. I tell people all the time, um, Marquise, Isaiah, Rico, um, them three, man, just be, been incredible um, as far as just – I witnessed it. Doing – they're a part of what just they do being there. the kids. Just being there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you know, all – it's plenty of times they get tired of looking at me. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm the one that's – I'm on you. Yeah. I'm always on you, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm your biggest fan, but I'm on you. I'll hold you accountable. Exactly. Um, Which is the most important part. Yeah. If we, you know, if we keep them, it real. Um, but them two, man, them three just have just been, man, just – I couldn't even imagine, you know, just the time that they put in with these girls mm-hmm. and these guys and – Right. Just that, a great that, that's team. the thing that excites me, bro. Is like because you got a group of people around you who don't want nothing in return. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, and which is the that's the hardest thing. If you if you put it in perspective of something like this, right? Say me, right? Obviously, I'm doing a podcast. Right. Say if I know somebody who's a camera who know how to work a camera, mm-hmm. somebody who knows how to video edit, right? Do all this stuff, right? But instead of them being like, okay, yeah, let's come together as a team Mm -hmm. and let's all figure it out together, they'll try to charge you for it. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like I feel like with with the friend group, I ain't even going to call it the friend group, with the brothers that we are, like money don't even cross the mind Mm -hmm. because it's straight from the heart because but we done been with each other when – you done came to my house. Your mama had to bring chicken wings <laughs> over. You feel Man. what I'm saying? Like, bro, we was chicken wing eating. Boy. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Walking straight, everywhere. Straight out the oven. Walking everywhere. You feel what I'm the saying? The whole family. Really. And all that goes Man. back to is sacrifice, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. the sacrifice is the biggest part. And that's one of the parts that I've had to teach myself is sacrifice and being consistent, like you said. Because when I am consistent with posting videos or even posting just a clip, there's a huge difference. Yeah. And not even, and this is, I'm talking about just the st- uh, statistics right now, but not even just those, you're not, you're not even thinking about what other people are thinking about. Mm-hmm. So when they cross, when they cross your page, this woman might've had a baby three and a half years ago, 
baby getting ready to get in sports or wherever the case might be. And they might be looking at you like, hmm, I think I'm going to put him with him because I see him posting consistent content. I see what he's doing. Right. So I think it's good that you actually keep putting your foot out there, bro. And if I ain't never told you, I want to tell you, bro, I'm extremely proud of you, bro. Like, Mm -hmm. because we done seen each other. You done seen me be at my lowest. You feel what I'm saying, bro? We've been through so many ups and downs together. It's like, bro, I can never do anything but support. Mm-hmm. And I'm always support. I don't care if it benefits me or if it don't benefit me. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But, like, what what's one of the things that you would tell – if you could go back 10 years, what's one of the things that you would tell yourself Man. today? Like, what's That's what's good. one of the things – or, or what's one of the things that, that replay in your mind that you always go back to? Like, it might be something that your parents told you, anything. Oh. That's a that's actually a big question. <laughs> I gotta really think about that. Um, ten years ago, so I think what ten years ago, what was that? We, was I'm 28. You what? I'm 27. 27. So you 17. 17. Right so around that time school. where you that's needed to be making year. good decisions. That's my senior year. Um, I feel like at I mean, if we go on right back to that time, I feel like a lot was going. Uh, just oh, handling my business better. I mean, yeah. really, I don't look at it like that. I feel like everything was supposed to happen had happened. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but I went through so much, like, we, which we all do. Yeah. But I feel like if I would have never went through what I went through, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Today. Big facts. And um, I feel like me doing what I'm doing with the kids is mm-hmm. I'm making a bigger impact than what I ever could have just be playing basketball yeah. as an individual. So that just wasn't God's plan. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some things I could have changed, but I mean, if you could ask me if I could do it all over, I wouldn't want it no other way. So mm-hmm. um, I'm really just grateful, man. So let me ask you this question, bro. How are you so humble? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, real talk, bro. Like, so you know, obviously I know you, bro, yeah. but like, yeah. Bro, you wasn't always this humble beast. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? He's like, silly. like you, like no. Look, I'm gonna tell you why I call you a humble beast. Is yeah. because, like, bro, I've seen you, especially like during AU basketball season, where you will be the coolest coach ever. Mm-hmm. But in the split of a second, you'll turn it on. You feel what I'm right. saying? So that's why I say humble beast. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And it's a, and sometimes even, even just with, say, we out partying or something like that. Right. You might just be chill, JJ, one moment. Then the next moment, you might be turned up. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So, like, how do you, bro, how do you manage, especially, bro, you know you got some motion going on. You feel what I'm saying? Every, yeah. Obviously, everybody knows you got some motion going on. You no, feel what I'm saying? Just, yeah, you work, do. Just I hear that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, yo. So, like, how do you balance? Because a lot of people... Obviously, like, you know you got clientele with the basketball stuff. So how do you balance being humble and then at the same time being caught in between the, like, yeah, I'm trying to – I'm still trying to grind. I'm still trying to be the best. Oh, uh, as far as staying humble, I just feel like – Oh. Uh, so the balance between humbleness and greatness. Humbleness and – I mean, for me, it's just not getting content. Yeah. So I'm not content at all. So it's like – is I, and, and I appreciate you for what you said, but and I get that all the time from y'all. But it's like, like I always say, I don't feel that way. Yeah, because you know, I'm don't always, see it. yeah, I don't see <laughs> it. So I'm feeling like, man, you just got to go harder. Yeah, that's really all my mindset is. Like, you just got to go harder. So mm-hmm. if I do something, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, you can pat yourself up on the back or whatever. But it's like, man, what's what's next? Right. So I feel like keeping that mentality is what keep me going. Okay. So I'm never just living in the moment. I'm always thinking about what's next. Right. Like I said, man, um, I was telling Keith this today. I was just like, man, we just getting started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just getting started. It's a lot I want to do. And I feel like this is my purpose. Yeah. You know, it's. um. That's the biggest part. That's what part. I feel like life about, you know, just figuring out what your purpose is. Yep. I feel like that's why I'm here. Right. And this is just inspire and pack, you know, these kids' lives. And just anybody around me, it ain't just about the kids. Like, I feel like if I meet you, you meet Jalen, I want you to be able to, like, right. you know, you feel that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I agree. Um, that's just. That's what I, I tell people. I think me and D. Rose, when I had my interview with D. Rose, we talked about you in a little uh, piece of it. Yeah. I was telling him, I was like, bro, JJ just one of them people, bro. Like, bro. I love him to death, bro. Like, 
For sure. You, Dre, all them folks that that from the original 2009 group, you feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, and that's the thing for me, bro. I ain't never had friends like y'all before. You feel what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, like, for me, bro, when I even when I was living away, shit, I was sitting there thinking, like, bro, damn. I ain't been able to kick it with the guys. You, like we ain't too never long, been, we ain't never long. been to the club together. Too you know long, what I'm saying? Long, and mind you, this is all the little stuff that we looked forward to growing up. Mm-hmm. So I had never got the opportunity to actually do none of those things. But now that I'm back, I'm like locked in. Right. You know what I mean? Because like you, you be going and you be like, bro, I'm missing out on this. Oh, I seen so and so and so and so out doing this. But then you get back and you just like. Bro, I don't want to be bothered because obviously you got – you probably never go out like that unless it's once in a blue moon because you so Man. busy. You so busy all the time. Yeah. Like I told you, I've been trying to get him on the pod for <laughs> – Man, don't do that. Bro, I've been man. trying to get him on the pod for so don't long, bro. You know what I'm saying? But, no. So, like, what what what's next? Like, what's the what's the next step for for UFO? What's what's next for the brand? What's next for you personally? Uh, as far as the brand, um, what's next? Again, we still trying to build everything. I feel like just from since uh, high school basketball ended, because like I said, I'm in Smyrna still mm-hmm. till now. I mean, my whole schedule has changed just from more sessions, uh, different right. age groups things like that. But I think like, you know, getting the AAU team. You yeah. Know, I think that's gonna be big for next year. I told you I'm um, down. I'm there, bro. And just just all around what I'm trying to build. I mean, we it, we're trying to be in the community. Yeah. You know, what me and you talked about it. You know, we got the back to school bash coming up on the thirteenth of July. Yep. Um y'all make sure y'all check that out by the way. And um just like you said, uh, you know, homeless shelters and things like that. Just really want to be out in the community, understanding right. what we about, who we are as individuals, right. uh, getting the whole team out there. You right. know, one thing about me, like, I don't, I really don't like the attention on me at all. Like, you, you, you really don't see me in too many videos. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know that? Uh, it's a, it's about the team, man, you know? Because, yeah. um, like I said, everybody got their own part that they play. And I feel like everybody's important. You know, I can't think these guys enough, man. I love all y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, shoot, like y'all really, man. You give a round of applause for them, man. They really, yeah. for real though. You, you know, know what I'm mean? saying? Give them a to, little round of applause. <laughs> to just so, being. Uh, my bad. Go ahead. No, nah, I was just finna say for like for you, for instance, like you ain't even know the girls, and just me asking you to. I mean, you just had a conversation one night, and you just went straight out there. Right. So I'm really from that time to the end of the season. Yeah. And that's something you didn't have to do. I mean, you can tell that you care when you at the games, and right. Um, we understand what that was like. All of us been kids. We who think about all the just the older kids you looked up to, right. or if you seen a, a college kids come into the gym and you was a young dude. Yep. How you felt, like, or how we, or how we used to look at Keith and all them. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, um. <laughs> Just having all y'all come and always be around the kids, around the girls, mm-hmm. around the guys. Uh, I can't thank y'all enough, man. I really appreciate y'all. Um, you know, my brand wouldn't – I ain't going to say my brand. Our brand wouldn't be where it's at if it wasn't for everybody that's playing a part in it. Right. Um, so, you know. So, just, so you would say that really, honestly, UFO thrives off the community. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it just thrives off – um being one being one um being who you are being honest mm-hmm. being caring um you know we, everybody's accountable authentic. yeah accountable and you know um someone you can look up to right you know i th- these kids man have really helped me as a person that, where i've grown right you know, we talked about it like, okay, I can't do certain things or I can't go certain places. Or, exactly. You, know, you got to carry yourself a certain way because yep. you got people looking up to yep. you. And, uh, you know, again, I had to grow into that. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He had to grow in the coach. I, <laughs> I had to grow into that, man. But I'm still learning, man. I'm not perfect. Um, But, I mean, I But see, it. that's what I love, bro, is that you understand that it's still more to go, like, yeah, There's still close. so much more to see, so much more to do, accomplish. Like, yeah. 
And that's one of the things that like I appreciate from you, bro. It's like even remember remember when I first came down here, mm-hmm. I think it might have been the fourth of July summer that time I came down. Um uh, mm-hmm. and I looked at you and I was like, dang, bro, you got big. <laughs> bro, I went home and got straight into the gym. Right. I ain't y'all can't see it now because that was a little bit ago, but I was getting mm-hmm. a little okay. buff, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like that's why I say all the time, bro, you inspired me to do things that I never even thought of of doing. Even when it came to with the girls, like just being there, bro, being part of the team and motivating this person. Like, I feel like we all had our own, our own like niche kind of, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like obviously sure. you coaching everybody up. I might be giving pointers to this person. Dre, Dre was more the con- the consoler. You feel what I'm saying? Dre sits you down, tell you it's all right. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> Zay, Zay was more of oh, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm nah, saying? Zay gonna get on to him, Zay, I ain't gonna lie. Zay, Zay, nah, Zay'll Zay, Zay, get on to him, but Zay'll, Zay'll if, if something him. crazy happens, Zay is the type he'll just look at you like, <laughs> and then he'll ask you, you seen that? Yeah. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Zay is more passive, passive aggressive. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus you, you kind of like, no. You feel what I'm saying? So I kind of felt like, bro, everybody had their own styles of doing everything. And I think that that helped the girls a lot because they had different opinions. Like us, when we were kids coming up at AAU, we do something and we didn't know we messed up. Right. But see, us, we only had one coach to tell us this. Mm-hmm. So when you got multiple coaches who can say, nah, you, that's what you did. Or when you got multiple coaches screaming at you, stop reaching, it starts to click in your head more that, okay, I am, I am actually doing this because now you got four people who saying the same exact thing. Right. So like, as far as you coaching with the girls, like how did, how did you develop the patience? How, how did all of that come together? Just being mentally strong and having to put feelings and emotions to the side. What you mean put feelings and emotions? Like when it comes to, so obviously let's say for instance, Abigail, right? Yeah. You know Abigail's really good at basketball. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So how was it putting, let's say, a bias? Say you might know a player is, is good, but you might see them going through a drill halfway. So how did you develop those, let me say, trainer traits? You see what I'm saying? You talking about for practice? Yeah, practice, coaching, whatever the case may be. So how did you how did you transition into being coach? Like how was that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I should have just said uh, how did you I transition like, into coach like, the first time? I don't feel like it was hard at all. I feel like as a player I always went hard. Yeah. Like, you know, just I'm not the smartest either. I'm not finna out here like I know everything. That's why <laughs> you know, we got other people in there, you know, so um but at the same time, it's like, you know what it is, man. To to do anything in life, it takes hard work. Yeah. You know, you, you, you go halfway, you're going to get halfway results. So yeah. the transition went really hard. You know, it was um, laying down a culture. I yeah. guess you could say the same way that you got. If you had a team, I did that for my training, a culture. Anybody who trains with us at a consistent basis. And probably kids know. I, you know, I hear it all the time, man. We ain't going We ain't going over there. It's hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I personally heard it in the gym when we was at the AU time. Yeah, um, you, know I mean? you heard what I said. Yeah. It ain't for you. It ain't supposed to be easy. It ain't for you then. Yeah. It, it ain't supposed to be easy. So understanding, like, if you want to work, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard. You mm-hmm. know, we're not going to give you anything that you're not going to use in the game. Like, we're not you, – you're, you're going to condition. Like, you can't play basketball and not be in shape. Right. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So we're going to condition. So, know? So as far as – uh, I'm gonna go back on the um, the AAU, the UFO AAU that you want to get started. As far as that, are you trying to do? Are you trying to focus on just one age group your first year and kind of uh, build it up from that point? Or are you trying to start off with a boys team and a girls team? I'm not gonna say the age groups um, just yet. I mean, yeah, I have some in mind, but yeah. we ain't gonna put that out there right now. Um, I will be coaching the, the girls again, right? For, what I'm going so to you coach. will be coaching girls. Yeah, I'm coaching okay. girls. Most right. definitely. Now, as far as my organization, yeah, um, I would say minimum three, three, three teams. Okay. Um, I'm thinking middle school right now. Yeah, um, but I that's really smooth though. That. And the girls, um, but I, I plan on training those group of that age group of girls. You know. Yeah. Okay. For, for a while. Okay. So that's that's. And and is it a specific reason why you you like to deal with 
not necessarily middle schoolers, but kind of in the middle range. Like, do you find it? Do you find it that they need a little bit more development, and you can teach them a little bit more than the older than the older guys? Or, I mean, I'm not gonna, bro. It's the relationship that I have with certain individuals. Okay, so this is this is this is this is relationships. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. Hundred percent. Okay, so that's 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 what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's just the honest truth. I'm yeah. gonna lie to you. you know <laughs> so, so you want to so you want to put together a team with with people that you actually know gonna go out there, give you your full effort, and ain't gonna be lollygaggers. Because let's be honest, that's all what we want. If you can get a team full of people who are willing to go hard every play, it's gonna be hard to beat you. Mm-hmm. But that's why that's why we I'm glad we're talking about this because that's why I say all the time, bro, you have to build a trust. Yeah, you know what I mean, like there was some girls, there were some girls on this past season's basketball team that didn't have a lot of trust. So they might have not seen the court a lot. Mm-hmm. But there were some girls that did have the trust and they might not ever came out the game. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So I think that that trust is definitely one of those big things. And so okay, so how did you how did you build up? How did you do all this, bro? So what did you do when you first started? Did you say, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and, and create the LLC. I'm going to go ahead and start reaching out to players. Or did all of this just naturally come to you? Did players just automatically know that's where we need to go? It stayed through consistency. So, mm-hmm. I mean, all of that in one. It was a, it was steps of yeah. doing everything. It didn't happen all in one day. It just came over time. It came from, all right, working certain jobs mm-hmm. and letting them know at the interview that I got to be off at this time to go train. Right. So, I mean, that's money that you ain't making. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. People don't understand just the sacrifice and that I've took to right. do what I'm doing, man. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's really all it was. Okay. So we're going we gonna to wrap it up with this question. For anybody out there that's wanting to follow your footsteps, Give them something that they could take with them. Give them something that that a piece of knowledge from you that they could take in and that they can take to sleep tonight. Give them something that can help them get to where they're trying to get. Or you could even tell them, you know what I'm saying, what, what they need to do to even start from the beginning of training. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? Um, well, I'll, first of all, I'm going to say I got a long way to go. <laughs> But I yeah, but uh, you still know you still know yeah, what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll say as far as is getting started is to start. Um, to start. Yeah. I mean, that's really all that you have to do. And I feel like if you believe in what you're saying, they gonna believe in. It. Yeah. You know, they need to understand. Like, if if you feel confident in what you're talking about and what you're trying to teach these kids, they gonna feel that the energy right. gonna be real. You know, the parents, the kids gonna see how confident you are. Right. And I think that's. You know where it comes from for me. Well, yeah, you know, and I like, think that is huge. Though. I was gonna hit on that. I was about to say before I had wrapped it up. We're gonna wrap it up after this. But I think your one of your greatest influences is that you you carry a certain swagger. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like you're not one of them dull dressed coaches who's gonna come <laughs> out and just look like you yeah. just hopped out of bed, threw a collared shirt on, and said, "Let's get it." Uh, yeah, you know I'm saying so. I think that I think that's one of the things that people see. They're like, okay, yeah, he's younger, he got a little swag to him. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. I like his coaching style. So, <clears throat> bro, we just came here to give my dog. You know, what I'm saying some of his flowers. We ain't give them all of them. We gave them, <laughs> we gave them six out the out the bouquet out of the okay. twelve today. You know, what I'm saying definitely got to have my dog back up here though. But, uh, bro, I want to appreciate you. Nah, I appreciate man, you, you know, so much, you know, bro. You know. you know what I'm saying? My dog. Nah, it's the sure. only topic 615. We signing out with my dog, JJ, J. Nah, Johnson, sure, Country man. Black, whatever y'all know him as. You know, what? you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, and tell them where they can find you at on Instagram. Uh, So, you know. If okay, they so you can you can contact. follow me on un- underscore underdogs, F-O. Um, and then Southern Contracting Group. I think it's underscore Southern Contracting Group. Right, so bet. you can follow us on there. Um, that's our, that's our business page as far as, I mean, we doing flooring, demolition, pressure washing, detailing, you name it, we do it. Say um, less. We can get the job done for you. So, you know, follow them Instagram pages for us. And if you need anything, you know, we got the services to help. 
got the services. Y'all heard my dog. Also, if y'all need some words, motivation, something like that. <laughs> bro, <laughs> so man, man, my dog up, man. man. My dog, my dog <laughs> gonna get you right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Motivator, educator, uh, everything go up, but nah, that's man, the only topic. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only topic 615, man. We signing out. Appreciate um, you.